are the spirit of 1.8 million West Virginians wills you to victory. Other places have pro teams, but in this state, the Mountaineers are a way of life. When I competed, and more that number, I competed for the state and for the people, not just for the university. Now, let's roll out the carpet and bring on the Mountaineers. Pitts not a spree. Yes! Alexander, Robinson oh. comes back. And now, the show brought to you by Mountaineer fans, for Mountaineer fans, the Country Road Webcast. What's going on, Mountaineer Nation? Welcome into episode 14 of the CRW Hoops podcast as we continue to cover the 2022-2023 West Virginia men's basketball season. And we now know that our West Virginia Mountaineers are dancing. If you was able to check it out on Selection Sunday, I did a live stream there during the release of the brackets as West Virginia's seed and opponent was unveiled there. West Virginia, we now know, playing in the South region as a nine seed where they will take on the eighth seed Maryland there in the same bracket as the number one overall seed in the tournament, Alabama, which would be West Virginia's second round matchup if they were able to defeat the Maryland Terrapin here in the first round game that'll be coming up this Thursday. We'll talk more about that here in the latter portion of the episode. Before we get into that, let's dive in here a little bit of a recap of the Big 12 tournament for West Virginia. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this. Not going to do a deep dive on the number or anything. Hopefully you guys checked out our post-game live streams over on the Country Roads webcast YouTube channel where we talked more in depth about the numbers following each of those performances in the Big 12 tournament. But what we do know West Virginia ended their run in the Big 12 in the quarterfinals with a loss to Kansas, who eventually went on to the Big 12 championship game, following to Texas, who repeated as the second consecutive year as the Big 12 conference tournament champions. Texas and Kansas, both very tough teams. What I'll say about West Virginia's performances there in Kansas City in the Big 12 conference tournament, great performance against Texas Tech, 78-62 to win outshot the Raid Raiders from the field, out-rebounded them, got to the line more, did a better job there. And then you turned around the next night, and I think a West Virginia team that was probably running low on their legs, they were a little bit tired, a little bit you know worse for wear there in that game. I think that that played an, um, an effect. And we also know that West Virginia and Kansas, it's a tough matchup for West Virginia. West Virginia has to be able to be on their A game, kind of be the best possible version of themselves. And I think they didn't really have that capability with you know playing without any rest there, going right into that game against Kansas. I think West Virginia's legs were kind of worn out for that one. But what you saw was the complete inverse, basically, of the game that I just talked about, the win over Texas Tech. Like I said, it was a 78-62 to win for West Virginia. Then against Kansas, it was a 78-61 to loss for West Virginia. So almost a complete inverse right down to the score. And everything that West Virginia did to Texas Tech, Kansas kind of turned around and did to West Virginia. I mentioned West Virginia outshot Texas Tech by about 11 shots. Kansas did that to West Virginia in that matchup. West Virginia out-rebounded Texas Tech, particularly on the offensive glass. Kansas did that to West Virginia in this game. So it was the complete inverse from the round one game of the Big 12 tournament. But... The positive side of things, I think, is that we are seeing the best version of this West Virginia men's basketball team that we've seen this season here in the latter portion of the season. You're having that happen at the perfect time here as you head into the NCAA tournament play, getting set for a first-round matchup this Thursday in what will be the first game of the you know opening round of the tournament, save for the first four games that will be played on Tuesday. But as far as Thursday, when the tournament officially kicks off, West Virginia will play Maryland in the opening game there, 12 o'clock on CBS. But hate to see West Virginia bounce from the quarterfinals of the Big 12 tournament. I'm not going to spend more time talking about that, though. But what I will say as far as this West Virginia team is concerned, they ended the season on a high note prior to that game winning four of their last five games, the only loss being a two-point loss to Kansas. And they were by far playing their best basketball of the season right now, having to go to the toughest places in the Big 12, Iowa State and Kansas, winning one of those and nearly beating Kansas at Allen Fieldhouse, something you haven't done 
since you've been in the Big 12 if you're West Virginia. So that just shows the capability of this team if they're on their A game. And we've seen them play against many teams that are in the tournament. Not only the Big 12, as seven Big 12 teams do get in the tournament. Should have been eight. Uh, Oklahoma State got robbed there. But not only has West Virginia played all those teams, but they've also played some other faces that made the tournament. I'm talking about Auburn, Pitt, etc. The list goes on, and West Virginia has put up great performances against those teams. So we know that this West Virginia Mountaineers team is battle-tested, but let's take a look here at their draw in the NCAA tournament, talk a little bit about it here, as well as the West Virginia women's team. Yes, they made the tournament as well. We'll talk a little bit about their draw as well as some other things we're going to cover here in Mountaineer News. All right, so first up here this week in Mountaineer News, going to get this out of the way, a little bit of podcast business, I guess you could, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun for us West Virginia fans throughout Mountaineer Nation. Here's what I'm talking about. ESPN Tournament Challenge. I know most of you, if you listen to this show, probably play ESPN Tournament Challenge already. So here's what I'm going to need you to do. There's going to be a link in the video description if you're watching this on the YouTube side. Just scroll down there where the video title is. Hit the Show More button where you can see the description. There's going to be a link directly to this page that I'm showing you right here on the video side on Mountaineer News where you can join this group and start filling out your bracket. It'll only take you a couple minutes, and it's going to be a lot of fun and well worth it. And if you're on the audio side as well, take a second, go to the show notes. It's going to be linked there as well. But um, what I'm talking about is the ESPN Tournament Challenge. We've got a CRW group. If you just hit the link, it's going to take you directly to it, and all you have to do is hit this Join Group button, fill out your bracket real quick, and uh, you're, in, you're entered there. But um, also you can search the groups and, of course, just type in CRW. This one will pop up if you don't have the link handy there but if you're listening to this you should have the link handy both on the video side and on the audio side but join this up fill out a bracket real quick free to enter no cost to you absolutely at all at all and it's just going to be a lot of fun to fill out our brackets and see how we do against some fellow members of Mountaineer Nation and gives us a chance to try and grow the Country Roads webcast community a little bit better and get to interact with you guys a little bit more so just having some fun here during bracket season making some picks but the bright side of it is and the question i have to ask you is do you enjoy free things and i believe the answer for pretty much unanimously to that question is yes and so if you enjoy free things come in fill out a bracket in this group if you win if you have the highest score excluding the crw hosts obviously if one of us were to win it would be the next highest score that's not a host but whoever wins this bracket challenge here in the crw group gonna get in touch with you and send you a free piece of country roads webcast merchandise of your choosing so all you got to do click the link in the video description or in the show notes here. Go to the ESPN Tournament Challenge app, join the CRW group, fill out a bracket, and you're entered there and have a chance to win a free piece of Country Roads webcast merch. And even if you don't win, you get to have some fun with some fellow members of Mountaineer Nation here during bracket season, and it's always a lot more fun when the Mountaineers are in the big dance. And speaking of Mountaineers being in the big dance, not only is our men's team in the big dance, but the West Virginia women made the big dance as well. Let's take a look at that information here as we continue on in this Mountaineer news segment. All right, so the West Virginia men's basketball team isn't the only Mountaineer squad to make the NCAA tournament. The West Virginia women's squad as well, now led by Coach Don Plitzewhite, has made the NCAA tournament as a 10 seed. They were on the bubble there. They suffered a heartbreaking loss in the Big 12 Conference tournament, a game that they probably should have won and it was a miraculous shot that they got upset on they were on the bubble so it was a concern if they'd make it there without that win but the NCAA tournament saw their resume as good enough to get them into the big dance and they make the tournament as a 10 seed the West Virginia women's team finished the year with 19 wins on the season much like the men's team however the women's squad actually did have a winning record in conference play going 10 and 8 on the season also swept the Baylor Bears who we know is always very tough on the women's side uh, coach P seems to have their number though beat them last year in the NCAA tournament as well here before coming to West Virginia spending her first season as the women's head basketball coach following the retirement of longtime coach Mike Carey and how about the job she's done to get the West Virginia Mountaineers to the NCAA tournament in her first season Coming over from South Dakota, where she has experience in the NCAA tournament, made a Sweet 16 run last year, and guess what seed they were? A 10 seed, just like the West Virginia women's team is this year. So hopefully Coach B can uh, repeat history there, and maybe the women's team can make a run through the NCAA tournament as well. 
but they will be playing in the Greenville Regional. They take on seventh seed Arizona in the first round. Inside their region, South Carolina is the number one seed. And interestingly enough, with West Virginia being in the 7-10 game, if they were to win, they would play the number two seed in the second round. And the number two seed in their bracket is Maryland. So you could potentially have West Virginia facing Maryland both in the men's tournament and the women's tournament if the West Virginia women are able to win their first round game. So that's kind of interesting for a long time. A historic rival there between West West Virginia and Maryland. At the time that I'm recording this episode, the time and channel of West Virginia's women's game not yet been announced, but they will be playing on Friday against Arizona, the seven seed in their bracket as West Virginia women's are the 10 seed. That game taking place in College Park, Maryland. So great to see not only the West Virginia men's team make the NCAA tournament, but the women's squad as well. And shout out to WVSportsNow.com for this article where I got some of this information from. You guys be sure to hop over there for some great Mountaineer sports content. And you can also find video version of our show there on the web at wvsportsnow.com as we are a part of the sports now family of networks and really appreciative of them but if you are tuned into the video version whether it be there on wvsportsnow.com or on our youtube channel over at country roads webcast do us a favor while you're in here real quick hit the like button drop a thumbs up on this video really helps its performance which in turn helps future videos performances here on the channel and if you're a wvu fan and you haven't already be sure hit that subscribe button helps us helps you helps get more of this mountaineer sports content out to mountaineer nation and if you're tuning in on the audio side you can find us on any podcast platform you like apple podcast google podcast spotify you name it just search country roads webcasts but if you're on apple Podcasts, leave us a rating that really helps but if you're on any of the other platforms be sure and share us around with other mountaineer fans that you may know as we continue to try and grow the country roads webcast community here but that will pretty much wrap us up here on mountaineer news let's dive in now with a little bit of ncaa tournament talk looking at the field in general and more specifically west virginia's matchup with Maryland in the first round preview it a little bit and provide a prediction here before we wrap up on episode 14 of the CRW Hoops podcast All right, so before we dive in on West Virginia's matchup specifically, just wanted to give you guys a look at the overall bracket for those that may have not have seen it here. This is the whole top half of the bracket I've got pulled up now. For you guys on the video side, you can check that out. Audio side, I know this isn't too much for you guys, but of course I always like bracket season. It's great. March Madness, one of the best times of the year. So just the bracket in general excites me getting to look at all this, you know, all the empty slots, all the matchups. Got your first four games down here that'll be starting probably the day after that this recording drops. I don't know if this is going to come out Monday night or Tuesday morning, but those games are Tuesday and Wednesday with, of course, uh, the Thursday uh, kicking off the NCAA tournament officially. So if you're going to play in the CRWA ESPN tournament bracket challenge, just be sure and have your bracket filled out by Wednesday at noon. That's when the thing closes there. So like I said, the link's in the description. Join that. But like we said earlier, West Virginia here in the South region, First round matchup against Maryland here. Let's take a look at this matchup more in depth here as we dive in with a preview of this game against the Terrapins, how we think West Virginia will fare in this first round matchup as they look to make a deep NCAA tournament run. They've got high hopes for it. I know us throughout Mountaineer Nation have high hopes for it as well, and we believe this is a team that can play with anyone in the nation. So let's take a look here at how they match up with the Maryland Terrapins. Here we are. This is the ESPN Men's Tournament Challenge that I was telling you guys about. Actually, I'm sure most of you guys know about this and probably play this. This is where you can fill out your bracket. This is kind of what it looks like as you're filling it out. But I wanted to pull this up because I always like this. You, there's a little information tab on each game and it gives you you know notable wins and losses things like that for the team so i went over this a little bit on our selection sunday live stream but wanted to do it here on the podcast as well i think this is very interesting you know of course provides the team stats um, for both of these two uh, clubs here uh, you can see maryland plays a little bit more of a slow paced style they really try and focus on taking quality shots a bit more of a defensive team than west virginia is whereas west virginia is a bit more offensive oriented this year as you see, West Virginia averaging 76 points per game. Maryland only averaging 70, but West Virginia has given up 71 as, a period, as opposed excuse me, to Maryland, who's only given up 63. Records versus the top 25, 5-4 five and four overall for Maryland, 4-8 and eight overall for West Virginia. In conference, we know the Mountaineers went 7-11. and 11. Maryland ended up with 11 wins there in the Big Ten, going 11-9. and nine. Notable results, this is what I like to look at here as well. I think some that really stick out to me, we know that the only shared opponent that I was able to pick up between these two teams is Purdue, 
West Virginia played Purdue pretty close. Of course, Purdue pulled away down the stretch to get a 12-point win, but we also know West Virginia was not fully healthy. They had a lot of people sick for that game, for that tournament down there that they played in. They had a lot of high-powered teams in it. That, that was when people really first learned of Purdue and how good of a team they would be this season. Purdue ended up with the number one seed here in the tournament, but West Virginia lost to Purdue by 12. Maryland obviously played them multiple times, being in the same conference. They lost by three in one game, but then another time Maryland was able to beat Purdue by 14. So this Maryland team, much like West Virginia, appears that they can play with anybody as well. Uh, you see they beat Miami by 18 points. Miami's a five seed in this tournament, beat Illinois. That's a tournament team. Beat Northwestern by 16. That's a tournament team. Only lost to Tennessee by three. That's a high seed tournament team. Did lose to UCLA by 27, but UCLA is a number two seed here in the tournament. West Virginia, we know they're notable uh, wins and losses here. I mentioned Purdue swept Iowa State on the season. Good games with Baylor and Texas, but was not able to pull out any of those. Uh, split with Kansas State, split with TCU, and we also know they beat Pitt handily by 25 as Pitt sneaks, sneaks into the tournament in one of the first four games there as they'll try and earn an 11 seed. So Maryland is a tough team, but I think the one thing that gives you hope about this advantage, in my opinion, if you're a West Virginia fan, is that Maryland was a lot hotter earlier in the year, and they've kind of cooled down as of late. More on that here in a bit when we look at the statistics matchup here on the deep dive, but West Virginia, we know, is playing their best basketball as of late, and so it's kind of two teams that have gone in opposite directions. Maryland was really hotter earlier in the year and has kind of cooled off towards the latter portion where we know West Virginia started super slow, starting 0-5 in Big 12 conference play before having a couple win streaks in there, particularly there at the end of the season when they won four out of their five final games before losing to Kansas in the Big 12 tournament. But continuing on the ESPN tournament challenge, um, information about this first-round matchup between Maryland and West Virginia – these team summaries are always interesting to me, and one part about the Maryland one stands out to me. Yes, I've already read through these. I did this on the uh, CRW Selection Sunday live stream over on the YouTube channel, but like I said, wanted to cover it here on the podcast because I think it's definitely very interesting. Before we get there, seed fact, West Virginia is the number nine seed in this matchup, and the seed fact for this matchup is number nine seeds have won 11 of 16 meetings versus the number eight seeds in the past four NCAA tournaments, so that bodes well for West Virginia, but just reading through the team Team summary of both of these clubs here on the ESPN Tournament Challenge app. As far as West Virginia is concerned, we'll read through them and then we'll talk about Maryland. The Mountaineers have a solid offense and below average defense overall. They can cause problems for teams by crashing the offensive boards and generating additional shot attempts as they are one of the best rebounding teams in the nation. However, West Virginia struggles to make their three-point attempts and doesn't take too many shots overall. If the Mountaineers can keep games close, they have a shot to advance, but they must remain consistent on both ends of the court to do so. All right, so nothing we don't really know there. This is where we'll get more information here, as I'm sure most of us probably don't know too much about Maryland. I know I haven't watched them a ton this season, but here's what a little bit of a summary about them here from the ESPN on the ESPN Tournament Challenge app. Maryland's led by star point guard Jameer Young and sophomore forward Julian Reese. The Terrapins are one of the top teams in the nation in adjusted offensive and defensive efficiency. They rarely turn the ball over and play great perimeter defense, limiting their opponents to a low three-point percentage. However, they tend to get in foul trouble and must stay disciplined on the floor to make a run in the NCAA tournament. Okay, so two things stand out to me for West, in West Virginia's matchup against Maryland there in regards to that sum, summary, and it's the final two sentences, I think the first of which – uh, being they rarely turn the ball over and play great perimeter defense. That does not bode well for West Virginia. However, this final sentence, however, they tend to get in foul trouble often. Uh, that really bodes well for West Virginia because I believe it was three guys or sports line. One of the two has provided the stat that if West Virginia gets at least 24% of their points from the free throw line, they win the majority of their games. West Virginia has done a great job getting to the free throw line for the majority of this season, particularly in the latter portion. And West Virginia has done a great job hitting those free throws here in the late going of the season after we know they struggled in the early part. They're well over 80% of a team as of late. They're going to need to do that in this game. So i got to think that attacking the basket with guys like Keity Johnson, Joe Toussaint and stuff is going to be critical for West Virginia in this one. Maybe a game where we need to see West Virginia go small again to be able to spread the full floor and attack off the dribble, get to the free throw line a little bit more because it seems like the three-point shots are not going to be a great weapon for West Virginia. So in my opinion, this is going to be a game
game where you want to see West Virginia take a lot of free throws and drive to the basket and draw a lot of fouls more so than shoot a lot of threes. If this is a game where West Virginia shoots, you know, 22 to 25 three pointers, that probably doesn't bode well for the Mountaineers unless it's just one of those performances that have been few and far between where the Mountaineers have hit a lot of three pointers. So hopefully West Virginia can attack this Maryland team and get to the free throw line. If so, I like their chances. Let's take a look at some more of the statistics here as we do our deep dive on this matchup and provide our prediction for West Virginia's first round NCAA tournament game as they get set to take on the Maryland Terrapins this Thursday afternoon. All right, so here we are. West Virginia makes the NCAA tournament as a nine seed in the South region where they will face eight seeded Maryland. This game is being played in Birmingham, Alabama. If you want to catch this on TV Thursday, it's going to tip off at 1215. First game of the tournament there on Thursday going to be televised on CBS. West Virginia 19 and 14 coming into the tournament in Maryland 21 and 12. That's the overall record matchup. ESPN's FBI predictor here giving Maryland a 51% chance versus a 49% chance for West Virginia. However, I think the early line on this game favors the Mountaineers, actually, I believe by two points is the earliest line that I've seen was a two-point favorite for West Virginia. We ran through the team stats a little bit there with the ESPN Tournament Challenge informational breakdown. Individually, though, Jameer Young that I've already mentioned for Maryland, he's the guy to watch in this. He leads them in points, assists, and steals, if I'm not mistaken. Really good player for the Terrapins. 42% field goal on the season, 83% from the free throw line, averaging 16 points a game. The Mountaineers leading the score, no surprise still. Eric Stevenson, his scoring average actually continues to climb up to 15.5 points per game now, and he's shooting four 44% from the field, 80% from the free throw line. We know that West Virginia this season has tended to go as Eric Stevenson goes. We need him to have a great march here if West Virginia wants to make a run in the NCAA tournament. He's going to be a key, but he certainly strikes me as one of those guys that could be a storyline here in the NCAA tournament as a guy that's really carrying his team and has a great March Madness. I know he's been wanting to get to the NCAA tournament. He got robbed of it during the COVID year when he was at Wichita State. Now he gets to do it in his final season of college basketball, and I think he and the other fifth-year Mountaineer seniors, Keedy and Emmett, should put on great performances in this game. I'm expecting a lot from Eric Stevenson in this game and in this tournament for West Virginia, and West Virginia is going to need it if they want to come out on top. Leading rebounder for these two clubs, Julian Reese, the other star player that I was talking about, to go along with the aforementioned Young from Maryland. Reese and Young, the two guys to watch for the Terrapins in this game, in my opinion. Reese leading the Terrapins in rebounds and blocks. Trey Mitchell, just recently in the past few games, surpassed Jimmy Bell as a team leading rebounder rebounder on the season, averaging over five rebounds a game, doing a great job on the glass in recent games for West Virginia, and they're going to need that to continue here in the NCAA tournament. The team leader of both of these teams in assists is also the team leader in steals on both of these clubs, and that's the aforementioned Young for Maryland, and of course, West Virginia's point guard who's having a great final year with the Mountaineers, Keedy Johnson, averaging over three assists per game. Yeah, and then there's a look at the spread. As I said, well, I thought West Virginia was favored at the time of this recording. They currently are a two-point favorite over-under set on this game 139 and then looking at the recent games for these two clubs this kind of plays right into what I was mentioning earlier that it feels like West Virginia is in a better spot heading into this matchup at least than Maryland is despite the fact that Maryland may have some better wins on the season and really has you know 20 plus wins and 11 conference wins a winning record in their conference some people may look at Maryland as the favorite and that of course is the reason why Maryland earned the slightly higher seed them being the eight versus West Virginia being the nine but my silver lining that I mentioned earlier on this is that I think West Virginia is playing their best basketball of the season as of late whereas Maryland has struggled in recent games. They were booted from the Big Ten tournament by Indiana as you see there on the screen if you're tuning on the video side. So over the last five games, West Virginia has won three out of their last five. Both of their losses coming to Kansas, one of the top teams in college basketball, whereas Maryland has struggled a bit in their last five games, only able to win two of those with losses coming to Ohio State. Penn State and as I mentioned Indiana in the Big Ten tournament and their two wins being over Northwestern and Minnesota so arguably West Virginia is in a better spot heading into this tournament but also arguably Maryland had a better season overall so it's an interesting matchup that I think West Virginia has a great chance to win though in this game personally but it's not going to come easy I think I've seen a lot of people looking ahead to West Virginia potentially matching up with the tournament's number one overall seed in Alabama in the second round and of course that would be a great game and that's one that we're looking forward to as well. But let's not discount this Maryland team and chalk this up as a win right away. I know traditionally West Virginia plays well in the tournaments. They make runs. They usually win first-round games for the most part. Hopefully that continues with this one against Maryland. 
like I said, I think they got their work cut out for them. Maryland has a couple of good players, but I think West Virginia is really playing their best defense as of late, and that's what really gives me confidence with this matchup against Maryland. I think West Virginia can defend them well. They're not the best scoring team, and I think West Virginia can do enough offensively as far as my prediction goes. Give me the Mountaineers here by four to six points over Maryland, winning in the first round and moving on to the second round game where they will likely face the tournament's number one overall seed, the Alabama Crimson Tide. So that's my prediction for this one against Maryland. Drop your thoughts in the comments down below. Let me know how you feel about this matchup against Maryland. What's your prediction for this game? And what's your prediction for West Virginia in the NCAA tournament? And more so than that, be sure, join the CRW group in the ESPN Tournament Challenge app. Get a chance to win some CRW merchandise and play along with some fellow Mountaineer fans. It all starts this Thursday with West Virginia's game against Maryland at 12-15. Looking forward to this one. West Virginia back in the big dance, and I think they got a great chance to beat the Terrapins. All right, so there you have it, Mountaineer Nation. A little bit of Mountaineer news, followed by a deep dive on West Virginia's NCAA tournament draw and more so their matchup against Maryland. And my prediction there, like I said, I'd love to hear yours. Drop it down in the comments. Let us know your thoughts on the game as well as West Virginia's prospects here in the NCAA tournament. We appreciate the interaction as we continue to try and grow the Country Roads webcast community throughout Mountaineer Nation. Be on the lookout for a post-game live stream following this game Thursday against Maryland. Going to have that up here on the Country Roads webcast YouTube channel, so be sure hop over here, subscribe to us if you haven't already. Like I said, helps us, helps you, helps get more of this Mountaineer sports content out to Mountaineer Nation. We'll have that on Thursday. If West Virginia wins, we'll have another post-game show following the game in the second round on Saturday. And if West Virginia is able to come away with the win there and advance the second weekend of the NCAA tournament, we, of course, will have a preview for that Sweet 16 matchup on what would be episode 15 of the CRW Hoops podcast. Regardless, that episode will be coming, whether it's previewing more NCAA tournament games or doing a bit of a review of West Virginia's performance in the NCAA tournament. Hopefully, it's the former instead of the latter. Either way, I'm going to be ready Thursday to cheer on the Mountaineers, as I'm sure all of you are are throughout Mountaineer Nation as well. And just one more reminder, before we get to Thursday, you got till noon there on Thursday. Be sure, hit the link in the video description, hit the link in the show notes, whether you're on the video side or the audio side, hop over to the ESPN Tournament Challenge app, join the CRW group, and play along with us, have some fun with some fellow Mountaineers this bracket season. Let's hope it's a great bracket season for the Mountaineers. Can't wait to see the West Virginia Mountaineers matched up with a longtime rival, the Maryland Terrapins, in round one of the NCAA Tournament this Thursday. We're going dancing. Hopefully we can make a run. Let's do it. As always, I'm Jordan Cruz, and until next time, let's go Mountaineers. If you really want to know, then come on, let's go. Take a stroll down those...